Hey everyone, welcome to Storyteller's Handbook and today we're going to be talking about 10 roles you need to fill if you want to put on your own play. It's Joel Brown here, author, actress, director. I have a BFA in Theatre and Drama Studies from a Conservatory Acting Program and I have 10 years experience in theatre. I am also working on my debut novel called The Refining. So you want to put on a play. You've got like 10 bucks in your pocket and you're wondering, can I actually do this? Yes, you can. And I'm going to tell you how. So today we're going to be going over 10 roles that you need to fill if you're looking to produce your own play. If you are just starting out, if you're not really sure how to put on a play, if you have never put on a play before, that's okay. You can do it. I have faith in you and I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do to get it done. Role number one, director. The role of the director is probably going to be you unless you have a director friend who is going to direct the show for you or you're looking to um, hire a director. But a lot of times in grassroots theater, we just don't have the budget for it. So it might end up being you. But don't worry, you can do it. If you don't have a lot of experience, that's okay. I will be doing a video on how to direct. I will link it in the description below. As the director, you're going to want to come into the process with at least an idea of what play you want to put on. You can find a lot of really great one act plays online. If it's something that has a copyright on it, then you might need to request permission to perform. If you have a story in your brain you want to tell and you maybe want to write it, it doesn't have to be something long. I will also be doing a video on on how to write a play. Uh, so look out for that in the future. So you have to come into the process kind of with an idea of when you think you might want to put on this play, how much money you have to put towards it, where you might want to put it on. These are some things to consider. Number two, stage manager. You may not be able to afford someone who is a experienced, trained stage manager. They can be expensive because their role is really super important. So if you can find someone who is hyper organized, a type personality dedicated to the project, who is punctual and who is a stickler for the details, they will probably make a great stage manager for you. Basically what they're going to do is help you accomplish your goals by keeping the schedule, keeping the time, keeping everyone organized, and kind of checking all the boxes. They're going to make sure everyone's where they should be, when they're supposed to be there. Your stage manager is going to be the communication between the director and all the heads of your department. And once you get into the theater and you get into tech week, the stage manager is going to be in charge of the show. Number three, actors. To put on this, this idea, this story you want to tell, you're going to need actors unless you plan to be in it yourself. If you've if you've found a director to direct for you. The casting process can be a lot of fun. You'll need to use non-union actors, meaning um, people who are going to do community theater up to mid-level theater that is not union work, which that's what you're going to be doing. Um, the theater actors union is called Equity. So you're gonna want uh, actors who are not part of that union. So they're free to do your show. To find actors, you can advertise on your social media. You can advertise on Facebook, but a great place to find actors is mandy.com. The great thing about Mandy is so that you can search via height, hair color, accents, different skill sets you might need. What you can do is search for actors that fit to look and the type that you're thinking of for your characters or you can create a post for your show and include all of the details about the show including um, the location, the rehearsal period, the performance dates, things like that, the synopsis, and then a breakdown of each character. Actors who are interested can apply, then you will have to do a whole audition process, which can be really fun. Number four, a crew. Backstage crew will help you with bringing setter props on, bringing them off. Backstage crew could be helping with costumes and quick changes. A quick change is when an actor has to change a costume in a very short period of time. You're going to need someone who's going to help you rip those clothes off, put the new clothes on, and then shove you back on stage. If nothing else, maybe your show is set in one place with one set of costumes. It's kind of a one and done. You're going to need at least one backstage crew person just to kind of be there for your actors. You really don't want them focused on the fact that, you know, I got lipstick on my cuff and now I have to find a tide to go to rub it out. No, that's what your backstage crew is 
for. The actor, you really want them to focus on their character, to focus on telling the story as they've been working on in rehearsal for all those many weeks or months of rehearsal and make the process as smooth as possible for them because when your actors have a smooth process, the show is smoother. Sometimes new directors will overlook this, but it's really a necessity. A lot of times you can find aunts, uncles, cousins, friends who are willing to help. They might be sitting around for the majority, if not all the show, but when something goes wrong, you're really gonna be glad they're there. So whoever you get to help you, be grateful, be thankful, but make sure they really are committed to doing a good job for you and for your show. Number five, costumes. Whether it's modern, whether it's period piece, you're gonna need costumes. You may have a person who is into fashion or is really excited to help you if you have someone who's able to take on that and kind of not decide because the director is making these decisions, but help the director research and source and, and kind of organize these things, then you can put them in charge of costumes, but there's a good chance that you might be doing it yourself. Something else you want to think about is the fact that you're going to have to, if you have costume changes in your show, you're going to want to label the costumes with the name of the actor. Usually I just do their first and last initial and then the act and the scene that the costume is in. You're going to want a costume rack for backstage with hangers so the costumes don't get crushed. Um, you're going to want to steam or iron the costumes before each show. You're going to want to make sure that they're clean and if they're not, you're going to want to take them home and wash them and bring them back. If you have someone who is men managing your costumes, that is a huge help and a huge burden off the shoulders of the director who's kind of thinking about everything else. Um, so costumes is definitely a role you want to fill if you can. Now you can go really, really simple with costumes. Maybe a guy's in all black with a cowboy hat. Maybe the crazy cat lady has on all black, but then she has on glass frames and this crazy old lady scarf. So you can make it really simple. Uh, but if you are looking for full costumes, the first step is to start with what you have. You can check with the, with the actors, see what they have at home, and then if there are still pieces that you need but they don't have, a thrift store is a fantastic resource, especially if you need something really quirky or weird that someone may not have at home. Odds are you'll find it at the thrift store because it's probably not very fashionable and that's why it's there. Another place that you can look at is the local costume rental shops in your area. When we produced three people with the Creatives House, I think we were able to rent two cheerleader outfits matching with pom-poms and everything and then two football uniforms with the padding and everything for one week, I think the total was like a hundred bucks. So it wasn't very expensive, quite cost effective and looked really great on stage. If you like this content, hit the like button and consider subscribing. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified when we are putting out new content every single week. If you have any questions and you want us to expand on any one point that was made, if you have ideas for new videos, add them in the comment section below. Thanks everyone, see you in the next video.